We don't see acute aortic regurgitation very often, but nevertheless, it's a medical emergency, so it's very important that you recognize it when it's there. Probably the most common cause of acute aortic regurgitation is endocarditis. Another reason is cusp rupture, which can be caused by endocarditis again, and aortic dissection. This is such an example. We can see a dissection membrane here in the aortic root, and this dissection membrane causes malfunction of the aorta and severe aortic regurgitation with a very broad jet and a very large flow convergence zone. Another reason for acute aortic regurgitation is diatrogenic, which is very rare, for example during a cath study, and trauma. Usually we do not see these trauma patients simply because uh, it usually involves more than the valve and uh, also the aortic root, and these patients usually do not come to uh, attention anymore because they simply do not survive it to the hospital. So from a hemodynamic point of view, the problem is that we have an unadapted left ventricle. The ventricle is small and cannot accommodate the large regurgitant volume. This which then translates to the left atrium and thereby cause pulmonary edema. And in addition, we have a reduction in forward flow as the left ventricle fails, and thereby we have a reduction in cardiac output, in other words, cardiogenic shock. This is such an example where we have massive TE caused by acute aortic regurgitation in the setting of endocarditis. We can see a very broad jet, and we also see that the patient has a fairly small ventricle. These patients usually also have a high heart rate, they have tachycardia, simply because they have to sustain cardiac output. And this makes it sometimes difficult to quantify aortic regurgitation. They all have hypotension, blood pressure, simply because they're in cardiogenic shock. And as already mentioned, they have pulmonary congestion and even pulmonary edema. This is such an example of a patient again with endocarditis and with severe aortic regurgitation. You can see that the ventricle is fairly small. It's not completely normal in size, it's already dilated, so this means it's not acute, but it's more subacute aortic regurgitation. What are the echo features of acute aortic regurgitation? As already mentioned, we have a small or only mildly dilated left ventricle. The left ventricle function is hyperdynamic to compensate, at least initially, and then finally if the ventricle fails, ventricle function becomes more normal and then finally reduced. And a very typical finding is a very short deceleration time of the continuous wave Doppler spectrum of aortic regurgitation. I already mentioned tachycardia. Another finding we frequently see is holodiastolic retrograde flow, just as we see in chronic aortic regurgitation. This is such an example here in color Doppler and here with the pulse wave Doppler holodiastolic flow. Other findings we encounter is premature mitral valve closure, which is caused by the fact that the end diastolic pressure in the left ventricle is higher than the uh, pressure in the left atrium, and thereby the mitral valve closes uh, prematurely in diastole. In addition, pressure can be elevated in such a way that we even have diastolic mitral regurgitation. So in conclusion, in comparison to chronic aortic regurgitation, we have very high end diastolic pressures and we have a small ventricle. Now that we've seen how to quantify and to assess aortic regurgitation, let's take a look now at how echocardiography can help us in the management of these patients.